memory systems long term memory long term memory is responsible for the storage of information in the brain for longer period of time limited only by the length of life it seems that human long term memory storage capacity is limitless long term memory is the final stage in the processing of memory the first two stages the sensory memory and the short term memory we have learned in the previous videos in this video we will be learning long term memory before going to the details please remember to subscribe this channel please do watch other videos in this channel and share it with students and those who love learning psychology thank you what is a long term memory it is a type of memory that enables us to store and retrieve information over an extended period ranging from hours to years long term memory allows us to retain and access knowledge experience and skills that we have acquired throughout our lives long term memory has an almost limitless capacity that can store information for a lifetime an example of a long term memory is the recollection of an important event in your life from the distant past or the bicycle riding skills that you learned in the childhood so these are certain examples of long term memory there are two main types of long term memory declarative and non declarative first one is declarative memory it is also known as explicit memory it is all about the facts events and data you draw consciously you tend to remember why you know these facts the explicit memory can be slower because when you have to take your time correctly recall a name or a scripture so it becomes slower then explicit memory is associative and it seems much more time limited for example if you go for a long amount of time without speaking a language including your mother tongue you will probably struggle this kind of challenge to explicit memory is known as linguistic de-skilling the two types of declarative memory is episodic memory the memory for specific events or personal experiences for example your high school graduation event then the episodic memory it is related to the periods of time it is unique and personal to you it relies on semantic memory it is not autobiographical memory someone else recollection of the same event or experience would be different from yours the autobiographical and episodic memories are personal memories from the past but autobiographical memory is more general for example when you recall the street name of a house you grow up that is an autobiographic memory on the other hand episodic memory is more specific to time for example remembering your 13th birthday party that took place on a particular place if you were asked to recall your last birthday you tap into your episodic memory and your autobiographical memory consciously and you will be able to share a decent amount of information about the event the second type of declarative memory is the semantic memory it is the memory for general knowledge fact and concepts for example the capital of united states or the definition of any term for example the definition of long term memory those are stored in semantic memory 
it involves the facts about the world a simple way to think about the difference is to recall something like the last time you met a friend at a restaurant the story of how you traveled to the restaurant and what you discussed with your friend is the episodic part of the memory it is literally the episode what all things have happened but the address of the restaurant the name of the food on the menu etc are semantic knowledge those are facts and these fact are stored by the brain differently the semantic memory plays a quite different role it is a type of long term memory your brain uses to help you store general knowledge and fact and it impacts your daily life you use your semantic memory to speak maintain focus while reading writing listening then learning a language studying textbooks solving problems navigating the world interact socially adapt to a new situation follow directions plan your schedule calculate math in your mind or using a calculator and the episodic memory it help in your daily life in maintaining your personal identity use information from the past to plan for the future then sharing stories with the friends experience empathy and understanding and help others by sharing the stories etc so this is the declarative memory that you draw up consciously and it has two types episodic and semantic the second type of long term memory is non declarative memory it is also known as implicit memory riding a bike is usually an unconscious activity the one we learned earlier the declarative memory is the one which draws up consciously and this one is an unconscious activity once you have picked up the skill and that's what the implicit memory involves it's literally anything that happens on autopilot in implicit memory you just know the information without knowing why you know or when you learned it but in declarative memory you know why you know the information and when you learned the information all those things you know but here it is an unconscious activity and you don't know why you are knowing it or when you learned it for example do you remember the first time you realized how to use a fork and knife or about picking up a glass to drink most people won't have memories of the first time they used such skills but they do remember how to perform these common operations the types of non declarative memory first one procedural memory the memory for how to perform a specific task or skill like riding a bike typing on a keyboard writing down your address is a procedural memory of how to write it is the form but the actual content of what you write it belongs to other levels of memory the procedural memory is knowing how to do things it involves both thinking about what you know how to do and the muscle memory that allows you to just do certain things without thinking about them second is classical conditioning it is a type of learning in which a neutral stimulus it become associated with a reflexive response you have learned the pavlov's experiment earlier 
associating the sound of bell with food here you unconsciously learn to associate one thing with another another example from your daily life is you will have a similar reaction to hearing the unique ringtone you assigned to your best friend hearing it unconsciously puts you in a happy mood right then the third one is the priming it is a phenomenon in which exposure to one stimulus influences the response to another stimulus for example seeing the word yellow and then identifying the word banana more quickly than other words the process by which a past experience increases the accuracy or quickness of a response for example seeing a supporter of a rival sports team and feeling competitive then being more likely to think of the word library after seeing the word book these are examples of priming duration and capacity of long term memory generally speaking scientists believe that a human brain can store an unlimited amount for a duration that may go beyond decades the first factor that influences the duration of long term memory is the way the memory is encoded the optimally encoded memories last much longer than the shallow processed memories long term memories are encoded in three ways the visual encoding involves the conversion of visual stimuli or information the acoustic encoding involves audio information and the semantic encoding involves concepts and ideas the second factor that influences the duration of the long term memory is the retrieval of memory the number of times a specific memory is accessed it plays an important role in the strengthening of the memory giving attention and focus to the information makes it stick to the brain for a relatively long time the capacity of long term memory is thought to have no limits long term memories are not permanently stored in their original condition it is coded then it is retrieved then again recorded so it changes the memories are susceptible to change interference and also misinformation memories are transformed every time they are pulled up long term memories are not stored in one specific region of the brain but they are stored in the form of circuits throughout the nervous system what is a long term memory loss it is the difficulty in recalling the information huge amount of information is stored in the long term memory and if one find difficulty in recalling those information that is long term memory loss it can also be a sign of some serious problems like dementia the various signs and symptoms associated with the long term memory loss is forgetting early life events mixing up names of person and places excessive irritability and mood changes forgetting common and easy words getting lost in previously familiar places trouble in recalling details of the events and taking a longer time to do the familiar tasks so these are certain signs and symptoms of long term memory loss causes of memory loss there are many causes of long term memory loss these causes can be classified into reversible and irreversible causes the reversible causes can be treated example of these causes include depression and anxiety vitamin b12 deficiency hydrocephalus major mental health problems in some cases the loss of long term memory may be a result of brain injury 
The causes of brain damage are the use of alcohol, brain infections, brain tumors, stroke, oxygen deficiency and drug abuse. The irreversible causes of long-term memory include Alzheimer's disease and dementias. The Alzheimer's disease, it causes memory loss, difficulty in comprehension, reasoning and judgment. The dementia is also a big problem in several countries. The first symptom is short-term memory loss and which is then followed by the long-term memory loss. Now let's have a quick recap on what we have learned. We have learned what is a long-term memory. It is the information stored in the brain for a long time that can be recalled with ease. The long-term memory are divided into explicit and implicit types. The explicit or the declarative memory are those that can be recalled consciously. This includes memories related to some events called episodic memories and the memories about the fact called semantic memories. The implicit memories are related to some skills that a person learns. Then we have learned the duration and capacity of long-term memory, then the long-term memory loss, the signs and causes. Hope you like this video. Please share and subscribe. Thank you and keep smiling.